Fandango. Yeah, in the, gonna, if, if, if you, you want, get the name right, yeah. we'll do the interview. Okay. It's Fandango. Yeah, there I forgot the yeah. There we go. Fandango you here. Breathe it in. People know about you, but they don't know about who you are, where you came from. So I mean, very much surprising to me. You know, you're you're not too far from here in terms of your roots. Yeah, um, I actually I'm from Standish, Maine. I um, obviously grew up a wrestling fan. I found out that there was a ring out in Buxton outside behind. Um, a gentleman's place of business. I think it was a fire extinguisher mm-hmm. store or something sure. like that. Fifteen-year-old uh, Kurt and a couple of his buddies from Standish started going down there and learning how to take falls and you know hitting the ropes and kind of getting a, a little bit of training, you know, mm-hmm. as much as you can in a sixteen-foot-old wooden ring. Knowing that wrestling was the road he wanted to take with his life, he took control of the wheel. It's hard to explain to your dad, hey dad, I don't want to play baseball anymore. I want to wear tights and roll around with a bunch of other guys that are oiled up. And I'm, gonna, and I'm not going to make any money at first doing it. And I'm going to be traveling uh, five or six hours on these road trips when I'm 16 with a bunch of dudes I don't really know that well. Sure, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, yeah. In mapping things out, he knew it would require a lot of legwork and networking. In Wrigley out in uh, Chicago. You kind of look in the mirror and you go, okay, if I'm going to take this thing very seriously, I mean, what do I got to do to get to the next level? So he embraced the nomadic lifestyle. (sighs) Focusing on getting to bigger and bigger stops as opposed to constantly looking in the rear view. Although his past helped shape his future. Getting up at four in the morning and lugging bricks and getting yelled at all day and getting coffee for guys. And if you can kind of handle that tough lifestyle up here, working in the, you know, 10 degrees outside in January on the Eastern Promenade, you can handle, you can handle a lot. From the rigors of bouncing around the country for 15 years to bending his body until it breaks. I've torn both my MCLs, both meniscus, hamstring. I got fake teeth here, concussions. The injuries are something he's dealt with from day one. Making WWE history is something he's getting used to. There's only been one instance where a WWE superstar made his debut at WrestleMania and was successful at that. That kind of attention is bringing more and more people from a past life at Bonnie Eagle to the present. Hey, that's that skinny kid with pimples and glasses that sat next to me in English class. And now he's on TV. Dancing. <laughs> so he's still kind of a nerd, just a yeah, different yeah, guy. Yeah. I kind of, I had a feeling that maybe some someday I would end up playing something kind of ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But no, not a ballroom dancer, but... It's cool, you know, I get to meet different chicks all the time. Yeah, so. that's, that's <laughs> certainly one of the perks of the job, I've noticed. <laughs> Having done what no other wrestler had done before and becoming an overnight social media sensation with his theme song, he finally decided to take the tour of how it all came together in Maine. First stop, the corner of Holiday Lane and Sleepy Hollow. Just think of how far I've come, you know, over the years. Being a 150-pound kid that's sitting in that back room there watching wrestling every night, just having dreams of someday wrestle guys like Chris Jericho. A short walk away once stood a self-made wrestling ring from his teenage years. I spent a few summers out here coming up with our own, you know, our cards for the summer. We'd make our matches and our big matches and film them and, and you know, go back to the house and edit the tapes. While it was just for play then, Portland was where he started to get paid. I remember changing in here when I was a kid. That's where the promoters would be in here. And you go in here and get your $25 payday. Like, all right, thank you. From the armory in Portland, it was time to trek to the scene where he made his debut. Say asylum. Asylum! <laughs> <laughs> it's like the first girl you kiss. You remember everything about it. I can't, I can't tell you who I wrestled two weeks ago, though. So being a, a 16-year-old kid, obviously nervous out of my mind for my first match, I remember coming up these stairs. I don't think I had proper wrestling attire. Just like the, uh, the armory in the trailer park, it's exactly the way I remembered it. 